Hi Grid 12s, this is JP. Today we're going to look at functions and graphs and we're going to start by looking at inver the inverse function. Um, just topics that we'll cover today is what is a function, um, what happens if I reflect a function about the x-axis and the y-axis, and then ultimately what happens when I reflect it about the line y is equal to x, because that is determining the, the inverse. Finding the equation of the inverse function and then graphing a function and or its inverse function. All right, so we're going to look at all of these functions, um, all these topics, and just, just by the way, just look at the notation um, for inverse. It is f um, and then the power minus 1x, okay? So that is inverse function. Don't confuse it with the derivative. Remember, a derivative is f prime x, okay? We just did the, all of that. So this, this is slightly different. So the, the negative 1x is referring to um, the inverse function. All right, so let's look at what is a function. So we get two different types of functions. We did this in grade 11 as well. There's one-to-one -one functions, and then there's um, many-to-one -one functions, right? So in other words, when the one input gives me one output, or when multiple inputs give me the same output, that will be a function right so let's just um, look look at look at um, graphs of um, one to one and many to one so say for example if there's a certain x value and it gives me a y value and then there's a certain x value and it gives me a y value and so a certain x value gives me a y value and a certain x value and it gives me a y value right so we've got something like that here um, that is a function, that is a one-to-one -one function. For every single x value, there's a y value, right? Um, so in our, other words, we've got our straight lines that we did. Um, they are all functions, of course, because for every single x value, there's one y value, right? So it's a one-to-one -one function. For every single x value, there's one y value. Um, so, okay, so what other functions that we do, well, that's one-to-one, -one. Um, the hyperbola, um, so if we have a hyperbola, something like that, and so for example, the x-axis and the y-axis are the, the, the turning points. So what we've got is that um, this part of the graph would, of course, never um, touch the x-axis, uh, the y-axis, nor the x-axis, those are the asymptotes. So in other words, we actually have a one-to-one -one function here as well. So for every single x value, there would be a corresponding y value. For every single x value, there would be only one y value. What other type of functions did we do? We did exponential functions. So we have something like that. Um, that's a very bad exponential function. But uh, let's do that again. And uh, so the x-axis here is my asymptote. So for every x value, you're going to get a unique y value. For every x value, you're going to get only one y value. All right, so those are all examples of um, a one-to-one -one function. And then, of course, there are many, many-to-one functions. So um, the most simple example, the simplest example would be um, a parabola. So if you think of a parabola, so you've got for the same y value here, right you've got two x's okay you've got that x value and you've got that x x value but they share the same y value so that's called a many to one function right hopefully you remember this um, and then also of course like a sine graph or a cos graph um, so you've got so in this case you've got for a certain x value, you've got a y value, but that is the same y value for multiple of those functions, right? For that x value, it's got the same y value, that one, and that one, and that one, and that's why we do those general solutions, eh? So, um, so yeah, so that, that's another example of a many-to-one function. And, uh, yeah, so there's, there's a lot of them. Um, you, can, you can play around, so something like that. We've done um, cubic functions. Um, that's a, um, a many-to-one function, right? So, um, so that x value will give me a certain y value, but um, it can have um, a possible three y values that's exactly the same, right? There and there, okay. So yeah, so that's, and, and of course, remember the x-intercepts for all those x values, y would be zero. So, so that's a function. And then we can consider the semicircle. 
so semicircle half a circle so that would be a function as well for uh, but a many to one function for that x value and another x value somewhere else they'll have the same y values right so they share the same y values yeah so that's also a many to one function right hopefully you understand the difference between a one to one function and a many to one function let's look at a couple of them that are not functions so in this case we've got a circle um, so that's that's not a function right if you look at it, the same x values right the same x values so x is equal to a for example they have it gives you two outputs so if one input will give you more than one output right so one to one to many in other words that's not a function right so that's so that's quite important here so if, if you think of um, um, just 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 short and short so one one x value can give you one y value right the emphasis on a function there's only one output multiple inputs can give you the same y value right there can only be one output but if there's an input right and it gives you more than one output it gives you two different values that that can't be i mean something there is not right okay so so that's just not that's not a function then it's it's we can still graph it okay we're going to look at that but it's just not defined as a function so in this case also these for multiple x so if it's the same x value so for example x is equal to b it's got more than one um, um, y value it's got three different y values for the same input mm -mm something's not right so the same thing yeah so you just it's just a ruler test eh? remember ronald euler um yeah he used this they call it the r euler test the ruler test for the same input we've got multiple outputs there uh, something is wrong and then of course a parabola that fell on his side um didn't hold up too well so for that same x value you've got two y values so for for the same input for the same x value you get two y values uh -uh, that's not right it's not a function okay okay so before we look at reflecting functions about the x-axis and the y-axis just just um, remind yourself just all those functions that we've covered so far the parabola remember a x a x minus p all square plus q and we can also use that formula to get the, the if you've got the x-intercepts right in another point the straight line y equals mx plus by c so it's y minus y1 is equal to mx minus x1 yeah hyperbola so y is equal to a x minus b plus q exponential function um, a x minus b plus q um, there can also be a coefficient in front there right so b times by a x minus b plus q then a circle is not a function but a semicircle is a function so Remember the, the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared plus the r squared. And if the if the center of the circle is not the origin, then it's x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared. So those are the equations of a semicircle, right? So it's just half of it. And then the cubic function we did last now. So ax cubed plus bx squared plus by cx plus by d. And then these those three different uh, two other ones here. Um, so if you've got the x-intercepts in another point, and or if you've got the point of inflection, right? So these are all functions that we've been dealing with, right? Okay, and um, so now we're going to look at, just firstly, what happens if you reflect about the x-axis and the y-axis. Let's take a look what happens if I reflect a straight line about the x-axis. So if I reflect, so if you've got like a straight line like y is equal to 2x plus by 4, so you've got the x-intercept of minus 2 and the y-intercept of 4, What's going to happen if I reflect about the x-axis? Well, that means my x-axis is going to be like a mirror, right? And there's a mirror reflection then. So we know our straight line is going to, to look something like that, right? If, you're, if that is the mirror part. So the x-intercept will still be there, but now the y-intercept would be at negative 4. So what, what happens to all those points if I reflect about the x-axis? So let's look at a couple of those points. So we had a point negative 2, 0, all right? And that stayed negative 2, 0. And then we had a point uh, 0, 4, and that became the point 0, minus 4. So the x value stayed the same. The y, y values changed sign. I mean, we only just don't see it here because of 0, and we don't really say minus 0. But if we have a couple of other points there, 
like the points minus 1 and 2, that would have become, became minus 1 and minus 2. All right, so the x value stayed the same, right? What happened? So x stayed the same, but the y values is multiplied by minus 1. They don't become negative. They are being multiplied by minus 1. Okay, so let's reflect the same line. Our y is equal to 2x plus by 4 about the y-axis. What's going to happen? Um, so if, if the y-axis now is like your mirror, so that mirror image is going to look something like that, right? So the x value, the, the, sorry, the y-intercept will still be at 4, but the x-intercept now would be at 2, not at minus 2. So a couple of points there. So the point negative 2, 0 became the point 2, 0. The point 0, 4 stayed 0, 4. And then a couple of other points there, minus 1 and 2, which become um, 1 and 2. And then, yeah, so you can you can have infinite number of those points. So what happened to it? The y value, oh, something happened to the y, oh, sorry, the x value, something happened to the x value, the y value stayed the same. So if we would write it down, so x, y, okay, what happened to the x value? The x has been multiplied by minus 1, and the y value stayed exactly the same. Okay, so just in short, what happens if I reflect about the x-axis? You multiply the y values, the y coordinates by minus 1, right? If I, What happens if I reflect about the y-axis? You multiply the x coordinates, those x values, by minus 1, and you get your new coordinates. Okay, Okay. so but we don't want to draw graphs every single time we want to reflect about the x-axis and the y-axis. Okay, so... Let's see what we can do. So if I reflect the, um, the same graph about the x-axis and then about the y or and, and about the y-axis, so our old equation here, it was, so y is equal to 2x minus 3 all squared plus by 3. What happened again if I reflect about the x-axis? We said x, y, the x values stay the same, but the y values are being multiplied by minus 1, right? So in other words, what's going to happen is we're going to multiply the y values by minus 1. And we just then want to, but we don't want a negative y. I mean, that's that's not very helpful. And then we just want to have the output to be positive, the f of x to be positive. So therefore, divide every single term by minus 1, and you're going to get something like that. So every single term has been multiplied by minus 1. So what happens is that equation just becomes like that. That's not too bad, eh? If I reflect about the y-axis, what did we see? What what, ha what happens? So x y. If you reflect about the y-axis, the x values are being multiplied by the minus one, and but y value stays the same. So in other words, this equation was y is equal to two x minus three all squared plus by three. So what's now going to happen? So you're you're going to to, um, so after the transformation, you're going to multiply the x value by minus 1. So it's minus x, minus 3 all square, plus by 3. So then y is equal to, and then there's a couple of ways you can look at this. You can, I mean, it's fine to leave it like that, but I just want to show you quickly, if you take out minus 1, so that will be minus 1 x plus by 3 all square plus by 3. Hopefully that makes sense. You take minus 1 as a common factor from those two terms. So then you're going to get, if, if you multiply that minus 1 x plus by 3 with minus 1 x plus by 3, this part here, right? You That minus 1 times minus 1 is going to become plus 1. So that then just actually becomes x plus by 3 all square plus by 3. So these two, of course, are exactly the same, right? So... Yeah, so minus x minus 3 all squared plus by 3 is the same as then, or 2 times by that, of course, and this is the same as 2x plus by 3 all squared plus by 3. So just keep that in mind. And that's just all that it is about reflecting x-axis and y-axis. It doesn't matter how complicated your function is. All right, so let's check. So it reflects a cubic function, minus 2x cubed plus by 4x squared minus 6x plus 9 about the x-axis. So if you reflect about the x-axis, well... That what happens then again, the x value stays the same, the y value has been multiplied by minus 1. So in other words, our old, our old function was, so it was y is equal to negative 2x cubed plus 4x squared minus 6x plus by 9. What's going to happen if I reflect about the, the x-axis we said? So the new function is the y values will all be multiplied by minus 1. 
So minus 2x cubed plus by 4x squared minus 6x plus by 9. And then just make sure that you um, write it with a positive y. So divide every single term by minus 1. So it's 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus by 6x minus 9. All right. And, uh, and then the same thing if you reflect about that function about the y-axis, so the old. So the old is y is equal to negative 2x cubed plus by 4x squared minus 6x plus by 9. Remember, if you reflect about the y-axis, what happens? x, y will become, well, x value is multiplied by minus 1, but the y value stays the same. So in other words, what's going to happen now is um, the... Um, all the x's will be multiplied by, by um, minus 1. So it's minus x cubed. Okay, just, just double check that. So x is negative multiplied by negative 1. Plus 4 minus x squared minus 6 minus x plus by 9. So y is equal to, so that's negative 2, and that will be minus x cubed. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Negative x times negative x times negative x. And then we've got 4, and that becomes x squared. And then we've got plus 6x plus by 9. So we've got y is equal to 2x cubed uh, plus 4x squared plus 6x plus by 9. So this is, it doesn't matter how what your function looks like. This, this will stay true, right? You just keep on doing this. We looked at what happens when you reflect about the x-axis and the y-axis. Now let's see what happens if you reflect about the line y is equal to x. So this is easy and plain. So y is equal to x. That, that just simply means, of course, that for every x value, it's got the same y value, right? And you just keep on, it's like 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, minus 1, minus 1, and so on. All right. Okay. So, so if I reflect coordinates about the line y is equal to x, what's going to happen? I think that's the easiest way to look at it is if I give you the point, say for example, the point 1, 2. So point 1, 2. If I reflect the point 1, 2 about the line y is equal to x, what's that going to become? Well, that just means that that orange line there is my, my, my mirror reflection. So 1, 2 is going to become 2, 1. All right? It's going to, it's going to reflect about that line. Okay, y is equal to x. Okay, so that's going to become one, um, 2, 1. If I've got the point um, negative 4, 1, negative 4, 1, what's going, that going to become? Well, if I reflect that 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 um, um, point about the line y is equal to x, what's going to happen is you're going to get the point 1, negative 4, right? So what happens, what, what, what do you notice about those, those couple of those coordinates? Um, so if I had x, y, and if I reflect um, about y is equal to x, well, that just means y is x and x is y. So what, what's going to happen to that? Well, that's going to turn around. You're swapping x and y. Okay, and this is all to do with the inverse. This is what I mean if we're finding the inverse. So remember the notation for inverse is f negative 1x. Don't confuse it again with um, the derivative. It's not the derivative. It says neg f negative 1x. What happens if I find the inverse? I'm actually reflecting it, reflecting it about the line y is equal to x. That is what, what is happening, all right? So let's look at a, a parabola here. Say, for example, I give you f of x is equal to x minus 2 all square. And I reflect this about the line y is equal to x. Okay, so first of all, let's look at some of the coordinates on this graph. So we've got the y-intercept, which is at 4. We've got um, the x-intercept, which is at 2, 0. And then the line y is equal to x is also intersecting the, the parabola in two places. So it will intercept the at, um, it will intercept there. I think that is the point 1, 1. And, and another place. Um, I think that's a point five five. Let's double check. So so let's call the the orange graph g of x. So it's y is equal to x, right? So g of x is equal to x. And if you solve those two simultaneously, remember f of x and g of x is y, right? So if in other words, if you're going to say x minus two all square, f of x is equal to g of x um, is equal to x. So is when I say f of x equal to g of x. So that means x squared minus 4x plus by 4 is equal to x. So that means x squared 
minus x on both sides, minus 5x plus by 4 is equal to 0. So that is x minus 4 and x minus 1, right, is equal to 0. So that means x is equal to 4 or x is equal to 1. Yep, yay. So we've got 1, 1, and then this is the point, 4, 4. All right. So, um, and then, of course, there's an infinite number of other points on, on this graph. Okay, so what's going to happen is if we're going to, to reflect this parabola, this blue parabola about the line y is equal to x, it's going to become purple. All right, so we, let's say the, the inverse of that parabola is, is, is a purple graph. So what's going to happen? That means if, if I just suddenly look at the, the, those coordinates, right, and if I swap those coordinates around, I mean, that is one way to draw it. So in other words, the point 2, 0, what's that going to become? So 2, 0 is going to become, yes, 0, 2. I know, that's very difficult. And then the point 0, 4, what is that going to become? That's going to become 4, 0. Okay, so the x-intercept becomes a y-intercept. The y-intercept becomes an x-intercept. So, so, and then we've got the, those points 1, 1, 4, 4. Then it's really useful because 1, 1 will stay 1, 1 and 4, 4 will stay 4, 4 because the x and the y is the same. Okay, so in other words, so we've got this, this point here. 0, 2, 0 will become 0, 2, all right? And four, 0, 4 will become 4, 0, okay? So that is one part of my parabola there, okay? And then, of course, the parabola will still go through 1, 1, and then it will also go through to 4, 4. And there's that parabola reflected about the line y is equal to x, all right? So, um, so it looks like the parabola fall over it's it's like it rotated 90 degrees clockwise so um so yeah so we're going to look at a couple of these functions where we there's a function given and then the inverse let's uh, just briefly look at how to find the equation of this purple graph again we can i'll do it in separate steps a bit later again but uh, let's just find how, how would the equation look of the, the the that parabola that's been reflected but the line y is equal to x so our parabola was f of x is equal to x minus 2 whole square. So that is the same as saying, well, x squared minus 4x plus by 4, right? Okay, and then what happens? So that means, well, y is equal to x squared minus 4x plus by 4. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find the inverse. So in other words, your, your normal function is going to become the inverse function. So what, what does that mean? If we're finding the inverse, remember that x, y, what does that become? What happens to all the coordinates if you reflect about the line y is equal to x? Well, x is equal to y, y is equal to x. So therefore, that becomes x becomes y, y becomes x. So simply, what that means then, if you're going to find the inverse, that means x is going to equal to y squared minus 4y plus by 4. The x's becomes y's, right? Saying in a simple way, the x's and y's, they swap. Okay, and now what we just need to do is we need to solve for y. Okay, so, but y squared minus 4y plus by 4 is the same as saying y minus 2 squared, right? So you could have gone from that step straight to that step, just swapping x and y's. And you just need to, to solve for y now. How do I solve for y? Well, what's the opposite of squaring? You would square root. So it's plus or minus the root of x is equal to y minus 2. Okay. And what happens then? I need to get y there. So y is equal to it's plus or minus the root of x plus by 2. So that would mean the equation of the inverse function is plus or minus the root of x um, plus by 2. So, a good question. I, 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 I can just sense that you, you're asking this question. I really hope you're asking this question. But is that purple graph a function? Is that purple graph a function? Is the inverse of a parabola a function? Not quite, okay? So, the whole thing isn't a function, but what happens is there's two parts to it. There's that arm, and then there's that bottom arm. Okay, so that is what that plus or minus root of x means. So in other words, there's two parts. In As a whole, this is not a function, right? But f of x is equal to plus root of x plus by 2, or f of x is equal to 
minus root of x plus by 2. Those will be functions. The, the first part, the f of x, let's call, make this one a lovely pink. Um, f of x is equal to plus root of x plus by 2 is this part here. And that is a function, right? That arm there, that is a function. It's a one-to-one -one function. And then um, let's call it, make it another color. Let's make it green, right? This part here. That part there is this bottom arm, right? That on its own is a function, all right? So this is like a bad relationship. Well, that just goes to a zero for it. Um, well, one is happy without the other one. One functions without the other one, but together, uh -uh, bad, it's not functioning. So that's the premise of divorce. So, so here we go. So yeah, so, so one or the other makes a function. Together, it's not, okay? All right, so let's look at another example. So this, we have a parabola again, x minus 3 all squared plus 1. And then let's rotate this, uh, reflect this function about the line y is equal to x. So the first thing we're going to do, let's draw that line y is equal to x. Okay, so there's the line y is equal to x, right? And what we're going to do okay, is so we're going to reflect it about that line. So let's have a couple of um, points on that, on that parabola. So we've got the turning point there, the turning point is at 3, 1. The y-intercept, so this is when x is 0, is going to be 0 minus 3 all squares, so it's 9 plus by 1 is 10. Right, and to then just with symmetry, we would also know that that place, that point there, so that distance here is 3 units, right? So that distance there is going to be 6, 10. Okay, so hopefully that makes all sense. You just need a couple of points on the on your on your on your graph. That kind of helps it. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to look at those old points. So if we let's do the so if we're going to find the purple um a point of them right there in purple, so the deri uh, derivative inverse, right? And then blue is my original function. Okay, so let's just compare those. Okay, so we had a point there, 0, 10. What's the new point going to be after I found the inverse? That is going to be the point 10, 0. Right, your x and y's will swap. So, and if we had the we had a point there, 6, 10, right? And it, again, if you're not sure about a, how to work at a point, you just substitute an x value into x and get the corresponding y value, okay? So after I found the inverse of that, that will be the point 10, 6. And then lastly, we've got the turning point, so that's at 3 and 1. So if you find the inverse of that, it would be 1, 3, right? So the word inverse means then you, you're, you're swapping of x and y. So if, you, if you've got a shirt and you're finding the inverse, it goes inside, outside, you know, so everything goes, goes wrong, right? It's, you, you, you're totally flipping everything around. So the same in a function, what is everything in a function? It's the two variables, so x and y, so those two swap around. Okay, so let's plot those purple coordinates. So 1, 3, so there's now the, the new turning point will be there, right, at 1, 3. So then we've got the point 10, 6, so the old turning point was, oh sorry, the, the y-intercept was at 0, 10. Now it will be at 10, 0. So like there somewhere. And then in a symmetrical way, the other point will be there. So your graph is going to look something like that. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So just, just, just take note of a couple of things here. The turning point. Okay. So that changes. All right. And then, of course, so the graph, so a positive parabola, if you're finding the inverse of a positive parabola, what's going to happen? It's going to change to its side, okay? But just remember, the turning points of those parabolas are not the same. So if the turning point was PQ of the new parabola, it will be QP. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, and if I look at the equation of the inverse function, what would that be? Okay, so let's start with the old equation. f of x is equal to x minus 3 all square plus by 1. Okay, if I'm finding the inverse, so the inverse means, of course, we're going to go from x, y to, to y, x, 
right? That's what the inverse means. So in other words, so f of x is y, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go, well, that is x, and then y minus 3 all squared plus by 1. You just swap x and y. Okay, so what now? You need to get y alone. So the first thing is we're going to subtract one of both sides. So that's x minus 1. Okay, and then we're going to square root on both sides. So it's plus or minus the square root of x minus 1. And then lastly, we're going to add that 3. So it's plus or minus the square root of x minus 1 plus by 3. So in other words, this um, um, parabola that you find, the inverse of a parabola, it's not a parabola, it's not a function, right? So together, this is not a function. And again, so there's actually two parts to it. So the first one is y is equal to the root of x minus 1 plus by 3. And the other part is y is equal to minus the root of x minus 1 plus by 3. So in other words, if we do this part like that, so this part here, that leg, is has got the equation y is equal to the root of x minus 1 plus by 3. And if we do that one with a dotted line, I don't know, you won't see a dot line. No, that's a bad idea. Let's do the dotted line in orange. No, not in orange, in pink. In pink, in pink, in pink. So that part there, that arm there, that has got the, the equation um, y is equal to minus root of x minus 1 plus by 3. Okay, so yeah, so hopefully that makes sense to you. Right, so let's say uh, let's um, this part is going to look at introducing log graphs. So we've, we've looked at a couple of parabolas up to now, you know, and we found the inverse of them. And but what about this, of course, other type of graphs? What about exponential functions? Okay, so let's look at the, the exponential function y is equal to 2 to the power of x. All right, so what we're going to do to this exponential function, we're going to, to reflect it about the line y is equal to x. So just a couple of, we need a couple of points. I think it best illustrates it. So when x is 0, that will be 1. The y-intercept is 1, right? 2 to the 0 is 1. When um, x is equal to minus 2, we get the point um, 2 to the power of minus 2, which is a quarter. So that will be minus 2 and a quarter. And then we can to the point 2. So when x is equal to 2, y would be 4, all right? So if we re reflect that, um, those, those um, ref um, reflects about the line y is equal to x, so let's just compare again f of x and the derivative, I've stopped saying that, the, <laughs> the inverse, it happens when you've done too much calculus. So f of x and the inverse function. So we've got negative 2, and a quarter, um, and then we've got 0, 1, and we've got 2 and 4. So that will be, it's a quarter minus 2, 1, 0, and 4, 2. Okay, so you just swap x and y. So if you plot those points, so the y-intercept will now be the x-intercept, so that's the point 1. Negative 2, a quarter, is, um, is now going to be at, at a quarter and minus 2. So that's like there, right? So that will be like a quarter and minus 2. And 2 and 4 will be at 4 and 2, something like that. So 4, 2. Okay, so what's going to happen to this graph? Okay, so what happens here in the original graph, this one is tending towards positive infinity. Okay, so the y values tend to positive infinity. What do you think, what's going to happen if the inverse graph then, if the y value tends to positive infinity, now there, if it swaps around, right, now there, x values will tend towards positive infinity. And the x values here tended towards negative infinity. Therefore, the, with the inverse of this, the, the y values will change, will tend towards negative infinity. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So, so there we go. And that's very ugly, but anyway. So, um, and there's your, there's your um, inverse function of the, the exponential function. But I said introducing log graphs. What's a log graph? Well, that's a log graph. Okay. Ooh, log, 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 log. So, what, what, why is the log graph? What is a log graph? <laughs> okay, so we've done a bit of logs. So, let's just go through this. 
So the original function, f of x is equal to 2 to the power of x. Okay, that means of course y is equal to 2 to the power of x. If we're going to find the inverse, right, the inverse means you of course are going to go from x, y to, to y, x, right, you, because you reflect about the line y is equal to x, that's what the inverse means. So therefore that means it is not y is equal to 2 to the power of x, but x is equal to 2 to the power of y. Now you need to solve for y. y is an exponent. Y is an, if the variable is an exponent, how do I do that? Oh yeah, baby, that's where log comes in. So therefore, that means log base of 2, number x, is equal to y. Remember, um, logs, base exponent is equal to number, so therefore log base number is equal to exponent. Okay, remember that. Okay, so that means this is actually f minus 1x, and that is log base 2 x okay so you just drew your first log graph congrats guys okay so let's do another exponential so reflect y is equal to a half to the power of x about the line y is equal to x okay so y is equal to a half to the power of x is exactly the same as saying well a half is 2 to the power of minus 1 right so that's exactly the same as saying y is equal to 2 to the power of minus x so in other words whether we've got so whether we write half to the power of x and 2 to the power of minus x, that's the same thing. Okay, so why why do I why would I do that? So we just drew y is equal to 2 to the power of x. Now in we what what we in the first part of this lesson we um we said when you reflect about the x-axis and the y-axis, you know, something happens. What happens again if x becomes negative? If all the x's, not x becomes negative, if all the x's are being multiplied by a minus one, what happens again? Yes, you reflect about the y-axis. So in other words, this baby, y is equal to 2 to the power of minus x, is just a graph of y is equal to 2 to the power of x reflected about the y-axis. Okay, so what am I saying? Okay, so there's the graph, uh, just a rough graph of y is equal to 2 to the power of x. So what will happen if I, if I reflect this graph about the, the y-axis? So hopefully this will work. Yay! If I reflect this graph about the y-axis, it will look something like that. So it's not increasing the greater x gets, the greater y gets. Now the greater x gets, the, 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 the more it will converge, right? The smaller it will get up to a certain point. Okay, so that is, this is now the function f of x is equal to 2 to the power of minus x, which is the same as saying y is equal to a half to the power of x. So what we're going to do to this baby again, we're going to... Um, Reflect um, um, reflect it about the line y is equal to x. See so if you draw the line y is equal to x in. There's the line y is equal to x. Right. And, and what's going to happen? We just need a couple of points there. So it intersects the y-axis at 1. Right. Another couple of points there. So the point um, 2, for example. Um... If, if x is equal to 2, that would be the point a quarter, right? 2 to the power of minus 2. If x is equal to minus 2, that would be the point 2 to the power of minus 2 is 2 to the power of 4. Uh, 2 to the 4. Uh, 2 to the 2, which is 4. So it's minus 2, 4. Okay. So in other words, if we're going to find the, the inverse of that graph, those those um, x and y values will just, uh, x and y the points of the coordinates will just swap, to swap around. So in other words, this is going to be the point 1. The point a quarter 2 would be like there. Right, and what do we also have? We've got minus 2, 4, so that will be 4 and minus 2, something like that. So what do we have here? So, so let's have a look what happens here. So in the original graph, as x, oops, yeah, as x gets negative, gets smaller and smaller, smaller, y becomes bigger, 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 right? So as as x gets smaller, 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 y gets goes to positive infinity, right? X gets smaller and smaller, y gets to positive infinity. Well, there is the, the reciprocal of that, um, the inverse of that, would mean not reciprocal. The inverse of that would mean that not as x gets smaller, but as y gets smaller, as y gets smaller, x should go to negative infinity. 
So x, x, as y gets smaller, x should go to negative infinity. So that kind of makes sense there. So as x gets smaller, y would get to negative infinity. And then the other part is as um, what happened what happened to this part here, as x in the original function, as x got bigger and bigger, it tended towards the, the x-axis. Now will we be where y is getting bigger, 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 it will tend towards the y-axis. So that will mean that will tend towards the y-axis. That's not very beautiful, but you, hopefully you get the idea. So in the original function, the x-axis was my asymptote, right that was my asymptote now my y-axis will be my asymptote and that's sometimes a very very neat way just to figure out what happens but okay the next example i'm going to do is more to do with the asymptotes let's just quickly look at the equation so we've got y it, originally it was let's just have it in blue the original um, equation was y is equal to 2 to the power of minus x or half to the power of x doesn't matter which one you use so what happens then is um, if you're going to find the inverse, that of course x and y will swap, so that is x is equal to 2 to the power of minus y. Okay, so what happens now, you want to get um, y as the subject, so therefore um, you're going to say, well, log 2x is equal to minus y, okay? And therefore y is equal to minus 2 log 2x. Uh, just, just a reminder about locks, you don't want a negative base, so at any stage just try to avoid a negative base, but we'll, we'll clarify those concepts when we meet one, one to one again. So there's that equation, so therefore the, the equation of the inverse of this is minus log base 2x. Okay, so let's look, one, look at an example where there's, um, the asymptote is a bit more complex. So reflect the line of the, the graph y is equal to 2 to the power of x minus 3, that exponential function, about the line y is equal to x. Okay, so this graph has been moved, shifted down three units down, right? The original y-intercept was at 1, and the asymptote was the x-axis. Now, if the, if the asymptote is, is also, everything will be shifted down, so the asymptote will be at minus 3. Okay, so let's check if I shift this graph three units down it will look something like that so it was like there it was there right so if you shift it down right where should we have with the asymptote now be the x-axis was the asymptote now it will be um m y is equal to minus three um y is equal to let's shift it down a little bit more so like there so then the line y is equal to minus three would be would be your um asymptote right the x-intercept remember it was at one now it will be at minus two okay so that's kind of that's useful so you don't need to do quite a lot to, to actually just sketch these okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just draw the line y is equal to x so, so that's that 45 degree um, line going through there so okay so that's the line we're going to reflect it, of course. That's what what it means if you need to find the inverse. All right, so there's the line y is equal to x. Okay, so what are we going to do? So let's have a couple of points. So we, um, well, that point there would stay the same, and that point there would stay the same. So that's quite neat, right? So if the graph intercepts the line y equals to x, you know those, those two points will stay the same because y is equal to x. It means the x and the y value have the same values for those coordinates. But the point 0 minus 2 now will become minus 2, 0. So that point will say there, that point will say there, but that will become the point minus 2, 0. So what does that mean then? That of course means this graph. Okay. So where's the so the asymptote? Okay, so the, we're going to, to reflect that blue graph, right? The asymptote was y is equal to minus 3. What's the new asymptote going to be? It's going to be, yes, x is equal to minus 3. So you just draw the line x is equal to minus 3 in. That's not too bad, eh? It's a very skew line, but anyway. x is equal to minus 3. And what does that mean? That means, so in the original graph, um, the blue graph, it, it tended towards... Um, 
um, as x got smaller, it tended towards the line y is equal to minus 3. So now, of course, we, we, not where x is getting smaller, but where y is going to get smaller, it's going to tend towards the line x is equal to minus 3, right? So that's going to, so the original one was like that. So this one is going to go like that, okay? And then, of course, as in the original graph, as x got bigger and bigger and bigger, it tended towards positive infinity. So in other words, in this case, as x, uh, y will get bigger and bigger, it will tend towards um, 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 where, 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 um, y becomes positive, right? Positive infinity. Okay, so let's draw that. So that would be like that, like that, and like that. All right, so there's that curve. So yeah, so that one is, I mean, I think it's quite beautiful. Look at that. So um, so that's the inverse of the graph. Y is equal to 2 to the prof x minus 3. The asymptotes doesn't make a big, big difference. I think it's just important to draw them. All right. And then just quickly the equation. So it was, um, so the original graph was Y is equal to 2 to the prof x minus 3. Inverse again means stopping x and y. So, uh, you know, x is equal to y. So the inverse then would mean it is, x is equal to 2y minus 3. So that means x plus by 3 is equal to 2 to the power of y. So that means log base 2, x plus by 3 is equal to y. Therefore, the equation of the inverse is equal to log base 2, x plus by 3. Okay, the last example, reflect, uh, if we reflect a uh, log graph. Okay, just remember that the log graph is a gr exponential function that's already been reflected okay so i i sometimes think the easiest way to treat these equations is you know that y is equal to log 3x uh, log base 3x okay so that is after so so okay so that's your original function if we're going to find the inverse of this baby right so the inverse is where of course x y is going to go to y x so that would mean it is x is equal to log 3y. Okay, so what does that mean? Oh, that's awful. So that means, okay, so remember the so base exponent is equal to number. That means log base number is equal to exponent. So in other words, that is exactly the same as saying 3 to the power of x is equal to y. Oh, okay. So in other words, that is actually just the graph of y is equal to 3 to the power of x that's been um, reflected by the line y is equal to x. And that makes life much easier. Okay, so what happens if I reflect this line, uh, this um, exponential function about the line y is equal to x? So we have a couple of points there, minus 1 a third, 0, 1, and 1, 3. So what's that going to become? Well, 1, 3 is going to become 3, 1, right? So 3, 1. And 0, 1 is going to become 1, 0. And minus 1 a third is going to become a third minus 1. So what we've got is we've got this graph. It's going to go that way. Okay, so where's the, where was the asymptote? The asymptote was um, where the where x was, um, as x got negative, it, it tended, as x got smaller and smaller, it, it tended towards zero. And that's going to be the same case now. We y is going to get smaller and smaller, it's going to tend towards y, um, um, the, the y is equal to zero, right? On the, um, on the y axis, where x is equal to zero, rather. And uh, so what is that going to become? So if you're going to draw the graph, it's going to look like that, okay? So it's going to tend towards towards that and that's just going to get bigger okay so there's the the graph for log graph okay so that blue graph is f of x is equal to log 3x okay so i think it's very important if you've been presented with a log graph just make a rough sketch of the exponential graph and i think everything just um, it's a bit easier to digest